Welcome to the Nerd Park YouTube channel or wherever this is that you're watching me from. I don't know if this is going to be a recurring thing because I tend to be more talky and less video-y. However, I felt that since I'm the only person in our group that I know of that has watched the movie that I should probably do a review of it. I just ask that you keep in mind that this is literally my first time messing around with YouTube videos, so nuts and bolts and all that jazz. Also note that I'm probably going to spoil things left and right for this movie I'm about to talk about, so if you're not a fan of being spoiled by things before you see it, you probably shouldn't watch this. Anyway, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F. F is for friendship. What? It's not for friendship? Apparently F is for Frieza. I thought F is for friendship, but I guess not. The movie starts out with a lovely opening. All these cute little critters running around, frolicking around the tree. Some kind of cocoon is hanging in the tree. Who's in the cocoon, you ask? It's Frieza! Of course this is hell for him. Then the movie opening comes, do 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 Dragon Ball Z. Da -da 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 Next we see Frieza's henchmen. How in the world does Frieza still have henchmen? I haven't done the homework on how long it's been since Frieza's been dead until this point in time in the movie, but I'm pretty sure if I was one of those guys, I probably would have left the group a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. They can't find the Namekians since they relocated, so they head off to Earth. They of course want to use the Dragon Balls to wish back Frieza and who they get to help them but peel off in the gang, who always seems to be looking for these blasted Dragon Balls for some reason. Really stupid reasons, probably. The main henchman, Sorbet, how adorable, has a kind of rude conversation with Shenron about bringing back Frieza. Basically, since Frieza was killed by being slashed to pieces by Trunks, that's how he's gonna come back, Shenron says. But the henchman guy's like, ah, I'm okay with that. So the wish is made, Frieza falls back down to the ground in a bunch of pieces. His eye blinks. It's kind of creepy, to be honest with you. They gather up the pieces. Realize there's a second wish, but the dog blows it on money. Go figure. Conveniently, they can regenerate his body with the current technology they have now. He comes back in his base form for some reason, instead of his final form, which he's killed in with robot parts, but that's whatever. Of course, he kills some of his own people for telling him that Goku is like way past stronger than he was. I found it interesting that he's aware of Majin Buu and he was told that was one of the two people he shouldn't fight. A crazy revelation is that Frieza, as strong as he is, is naturally that strong. He's never trained a day in his life. Apparently four months of training, as he says, is enough to get him to a place to where he can handle Super Saiyan gods at this point, whereas he, he couldn't even beat Goku and Trunks at base Super Saiyan 4. I mean, he even makes Gohan look like a pansy in this movie. He straight up punches Gohan in the chest so hard that he stops his heart, and he can only be brought back by Piccolo defibrillating him and Krillin throwing healing beans in his mouth. Let's be honest, Gohan here doesn't need help looking like a shriveled up pansy compared to the glory days of Cell. I mean, at one point he says, I could probably transform into a Super Saiyan whenever I wanted to, maybe, I guess. How do you not know? He's just slacked off so much, it's just really sad. I mean, I used to love the character, but he's really let it go. This movie introduced, to me at least, Jarko the Galactic Patrolman. Where did this guy come from? I could see him as either being annoying or endearing. He got a good bit of the comedic parts. Loved Master Roshi having some game in this movie. He comes with the main group to fight the bajillion henchmen Frieza's managed to gather up in the past months. He gets huge and Kamehameha waves people left and right. It's actually kind of awesome. Tien and Piccolo are there. That's about it for them. Yamcha's not around this time. He's apparently gone the way of Chaozu in that, hey, let's stop dying. Krillin is bald again for this movie. After we first see him as a traffic policeman. Interesting. I don't know how much of the female population watches Dragon Ball Z, but I know a lot of them who are feminists are gonna have a problem with this movie. The short moment you have with Krillin in 18, 18 
is clearly way stronger than Krillin, yet he goes to fight and leaves her to watch the kids. Uh-oh. Where are Goten and Trunks in this fight? It's not like they're incapable, especially when they're fused together. Also, where's Majin Buu? It would have been so cool to include him in that, especially after when Frieza references him. He could have been there like, hey, what up, I'm here, who wants some of this? Meanwhile, while all this is happening, Goku and Vegeta are on Beerus' planet, training with Whis, who both of them are fighting him at once and getting owned horribly. In short, they learn about Frieza being on Earth, and they travel to Earth using his transmission. Frieza transforms into his final form immediately, but Goku stays normal and stays pretty on par with him, like they're playing around. At one point, Vegeta pops in and starts fighting Goku because he's mad he didn't get his turn. That's how much of a game that this is for them, apparently. Soon enough, Goku and Frieza get tired of it, and they both transform. Goku's Super Saiyan is blue for some reason, and he just says some Super Saiyan God, blah 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 blah. Frieza turns gold, and apparently that's the ticket because he pretty much owns the fight for a while. However, he starts to lose it because reasons. Both Goku and Vegeta are like, dude, you jumped the horse on this one. You should have trained a little bit harder. So, of course, eventually Frieza starts to wear down. Goku throws a wallopine on him and knocks him to the ground where he's kind of grovelly. You know, very similar to how it was in the original fight with those two. Goku is like, ah, oh, now nah, you can go on. You can come back later when you're stronger. That's fine. Bad move. And probably the cheapest move that I've ever seen in a Dragon Ball anything ever. Frieza's henchman guy is over here in the corner. Shoots Goku through the chest with like a whatever ring laser beam thing. I call shenanigans. Shenanigans. I've seen plenty of times in Dragon Ball anything where way lesser attacks will just bounce off people or won't do anything. Shenanigans. Anyway, in this case, Goku gets shot through with that whatever laser beam falls down near dead. Vegeta then has to step in and pretty much owns the rest of the fight, which there isn't much of a fight left to own. He just like punches and kicks him a few times and Frieza becomes not golden. As Vegeta is about to kill Frieza, Frieza of course blows up the planet. The only people to survive are the ones around Whis. We were all devastated because the Earth's blown up. But wait, anti-climax. Whis reminds us of his time powers that he brought up before to set up this moment. He can go back in time just before Frieza blows up the planet so Goku can do the right thing this time. They go back in time just before Frieza blows up the planet and Goku blows him up promptly. Afterwards, Goku and Vegeta are like, hey, we could have done it a lot easier if we had fought together. Nah. That's lame. That's boring. Let's never do that. Okay. The end. Post credits. Frieza goes back to where he was at the beginning of the movie. Clearly no progress has been made for him. Well, he has less metal parts, I guess. And that's the movie. I know I probably come across as nitpicky, but that's just me. However, the movie itself was really enjoyable. I personally liked it a lot better than Battle of Gods. I didn't hate Battle of Gods either, but Battle of Gods was more like, hey, here's all these characters you used to know, whereas Resurrection F was like, hey, here's all the good action scenes. Truthfully, if they keep making these movies, though, they'll keep getting my money. I give this movie six out of seven Dragon Balls. Not quite enough to summon the dragon, but pretty darn close. Now, I summoned Shenron recently, and these were my two wishes. One. Please like and share and comment down below and let us know what you think. And to check out all of our other stuff we're doing on YouTube, on the podcasts, a lot of good stuff there to check out. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.